So what color wrap would you guys pick out for this car? Would you leave it yellow or would you do something crazy like chrome or multicolor pattern? Let me know in the comments below. This is back in my garage. I was getting it ready to take the chains and I put on a test panel to see how the car is going to look and see how well of a job I can do wrapping the car. Let me know what you guys think. Okay, so when it comes back from Shane's, I'll give you a little hint. It should look something like that car when we're done. So what do you guys think? Do you like the wrap? you think I can finish it up myself or you think I should take it down to Shane's and see what he can do for me? See if he can do a better job. I, I kind of like the wrinkle effect. Just a couple small wrinkles I couldn't get out, but I think they'll work their way out over time. Shouldn't be a problem. I see no reason to take it down to Shane's, but... He's insistent I bring it down. Okay, so I just had a great idea. Since this turned out so well, I'm gonna get into the car wrapping detail business. So I think this is a perfect opportunity for me to put my name and phone number. So when people see this work of art, they know who to contact. I may even do this full time and quit my YouTube gig. What do you guys think? I think it's a great idea. Let's try it out. Okay, I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to read that. I may have a marketing flaw already. It's a little better. You can see I've got the car loaded up with just that one incident. I didn't have a spotter. I was using the GoPro as a guidance system. So minor incident with that ratchet strap being down. The rubber pieces that are hanging down, they're just very flexible. There's no damage done to those. There's about one inch on each side for clearance. Door opens up fine with no problem. There's an inch, probably two inches between that fender uh, skirting. No problem. You can see this test side was a little tighter. I used some two by 12 pieces. There's an eight foot section, an 18 inch section, and a 30 inch section on the bottom just to give it some better angle to get up on there pick those up at lows cut a 45 degree angle on the end so it's easy to get up and off there's a little more ground a uh, little more side clearance on the passenger side as you can see plenty of room trailer is more than wide enough for this corvette and it's got the z07 package here's where we did the damage as you can see that ratchet strap needs to be down otherwise you're going to cause damage to that z07 front lip as i seen here minor damage it's on the bottom half nobody's really ever going to see it uh, unless you watch this video and you can see that little rubber flap just for aerodynamics not going to do any structural damage plenty of room to fit underneath there as long as those tire things have taken taken out so if we look here this is the jack i had it fully extended when it was down and something happened uh, at some point it got broken between here and, and when i got gas at the first station i had it fully extended so that i could get a better angle on the back of the trailer so it need less ground clearance and you can see there's two plates on the pavement that i took off the trailer you want to bring those with you so you can reinstall stall them before you drop the trailer off they don't charge you any damage fees i've got the car all loaded up on the trailer and you can see i've used two extra ratchet straps to secure that rear axle to the trailer and then the front axle to the trailer as well because there's nothing to stop the vehicle from coming forward because i've taken those tire stops off the trailer the tire stops would have prevented it from moving forward so you need to supplement that the safety chains are there just basically to keep the vehicle from falling off completely but nothing really to secure it they're made to be loose okay i've got the car loaded up and this is on my way to pennsylvania i just wanted to give you a shot of it rolling what it looks like driving down the road here's the first stop for gas i put 93 in it because the truck just seems to run better it doesn't detonate as bad as if i'm using the normal 87 for towing normally i would use 87 but it runs a lot smoother you can see here's the bent pin that i was talking about earlier somehow between when i left my driveway and when i first got gas that pin got bent so i used an extra ratchet strap and just secured it keep it from flopping around it's really easy fix just to get me back to the rental place company and this is the loudest gas pump i've ever heard of as you can hear in the background noise just how loud it is it definitely needed some lubrication or maybe just to be replaced I've 
Got a 34 gallon tank. I was averaging about nine and a half miles a gallon on the way down. It was such a weird feeling to have that vehicle so close behind me and it is a very aggressive looking vehicle. And I mean, that close, it always startled me. The truck ran great the whole time, never overheated, didn't have any problems getting up and down the hills. The 5.3 liter V8, 315 horsepower. Okay, we finally made it. We're here at InChain Design, dropping off the C7R Corvette. I'm gonna get a wrap done. This will be the last time I get to see it in yellow. Got a little salty from the ride up. There's no rock chips or anything. Turned out pretty good. Fit on the U-Haul trailer with no problems. Could use a little blocking to get it on the back. You can see it's not very dirty. A little salty, not too bad. <laughs> in the hands of Curtis. Kurt the Burt. Thanks Curtis. Thanks Dan. So I needed fuel on the way back and I've never been to a Sheets gas station before. And I know Mike over at Street Speed 717, him and Nick are always going to Sheets. So I figured in tribute of him, I would stop in and give it a try. I was very impressed. As you'll see, the nozzles actually have the little clickers on there so you don't have to stand outside your vehicle the whole time that made a huge difference again using 93 octane just seems to run better get a little more performance there's those clickers i was talking about very few gas stations here in new york still have those on there it's just such a nice feature when you're standing outside you don't have to stand there in the cold weather on the way back i was averaging about 10 and a half to 12 miles per gallon here's my baby right there this is the only thing that's going to tide me over for the next couple months 34 gallon tank, 26 gallons, 90 bucks. So each way is $90 plus a little bit extra here and there. Gotta relax. This is Earth Radio. And now here's human music. Human music. I like it. After my little pit stop, truck's been running good. I've been running for about another three hours here. Traffic's really light. As you can see, I'm doing well with the fuel up to 14 miles per gallon on the average. So I'm at the local U-Haul dealer, and I'm going to show you the plates that have to come off when you're transporting a low vehicle. There's four bolts that are three-quarter inch. You need a ratchet the socket and a box end wrench to take those four bolts off to get that plate out of there. Now you do also need to take off the bolt on the, on the side so you can loosen that up to get the plate off of there. But it, they come off within a matter of minutes. If you have an impact gun with a socket adapter, much quicker. Now here's the jack fully extended and I had it up all the way when I loaded the car to give me some ground clearance in the back but I ended up bending the pin and you can see how I actually broke it while well, it wasn't damaged. So this is the other side of the plates that have to come off. And you can see there's one bolt right there that has to be taken off just to give it a little room because it's pinched in there. There's plenty of room for that Corvette to go on there. The next thing I did was I measured it and I was 79 inches. The Corvette's about 77 inches. So it gives you about one inch on each side. So I knew for sure it would fit width wise. I'd also measured front to back and it was about 148 inches, which is more than enough for the Corvette to sit on there. Even if the vehicle does hang over on the front or back, it's not going to impact it. As long as the weight transfer is fine, you're okay. This is where you're going to run into problems with the deck height. These Corvettes are so low and they have such minimal ground clearance. The incline or decline of that trailer is going to be where your front and back scrapes as you're trying to load it. You can see this trailer, the way it was set up on the jack is about 18 inches. One other thing that looks concerning is the two center lips, how they taper in like that. That's to keep the rain and debris from getting up in the car. Also keeps the vehicles from bouncing around. That wasn't an issue with my vehicle. I have the Z07 package in the front spoiler. Not a problem. 
nothing to worry about it fit on just fine one other thing is these fenders on the driver's side fold out with the rubber strap that makes it nice if you drive the vehicle on you can open the door and get out you don't have to climb out the window or out the back hatch which is an option if you do back the vehicle on over on the passenger side there are seven bolts that can be removed to take that fender off the trailer should you decide to back your car up on there and you don't want to climb out the window or the rear hatch i think they're about three quarter inch they should come off really easy as well i didn't do that on this one i just decided to drive it up on there this trailer is used to transport the storage pods that you can rent from and move from location to location as you can tell by those rollers in the exterior frame on the outside you definitely can't transport a vehicle on this with the way it's set up so if you see this and they try and wrench you this run from them it's not gonna work this trailer as you can see has an orange deck it's a smaller transport trailer it's for smaller vehicles it's not as wide on the inside it's only about 74 inches which is just not wide enough so you need to specify you need the galvanized bottom trailer that's 79 inches wide because of your wide corvette gives you some extra room i did measure it lengthwise it's about 144 to 148 inches before it hits the tire stop one thing that i noticed with this trailer is those tire stops are not removable they're welded on there as you can see here in the video that there's no bolts to remove so once you get that vehicle on there, there's nothing you can do. If it's a low clearance vehicle, you're stuck with it. Everything is welded on there. The only thing that's removable are the rods that allow that ratchet strap to move left to right. You can see everything's welded on there. On the driver's side, it does have a fender that folds out. Same, it's got the rubber strap that holds it in there and the fender flops out. So if you do drive the vehicle on, you can get out the driver door without any issues. Same as the galvanized trailer bottom. The deck height was a little bit lower, just around 16 inches, which would be an advantage if you had a lower vehicle and you couldn't get to access to slope or anything to get the vehicle on there but it's really not wide enough for a corvette the trailers operate on a surge hydraulic brake system and they utilize a four pin wire harness so you'll need to bring an adapter if your vehicle takes a five or six pin harness and you'll also have to test the lights before you can leave the facility it was about sixty dollars to rent a trailer to and from this location it would have been an additional hundred dollars if i wanted to leave the trailer in pennsylvania here in the instruction manual, it explains the differences between the two trailers, the galvanized trailer and the orange trailer. It also takes one and seven inch ball or two inch ball. Either one is fine. Thank you very much. I'm going to have some more videos coming out for the new wrap design and in chain graphics.